So we are at the Strait of Gibraltar in the UK. The Strait of Gibraltar is a super interesting and strategic point in the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. Don't forget to click subscribe and don't forget to smash that like button. So you may think we're at an airport, but actually we are just driving right across the runway of Gibraltar Airport. And all these people walking are going to cross the border. So when a plane lands, they literally just stop traffic from both ways. The plane lands, almost falling right into the Mediterranean Sea or the Atlantic Ocean, and that's it. And then when the plane is done, they reopen the runway and back across you go. And here we go through customs, which takes like two minutes tops. Quick. This right here, is the end of Spain. Gibraltar is a United Kingdom territory. It's a British territory. So you see all these ships out here? They're waiting to be able to cross this little tiny passage from the Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean. We're literally at the opening of the Mediterranean. This is the only way ships can get through. And do you see this mountain? That is Morocco, that's Africa. So that's the point of Africa, the end of Spain, a little tiny territory, Gibraltar, which is a huge rock, which is a British territory, Atlantic Ocean, the Mediterranean Ocean. How amazing and strategic is this, right? <laughs> Now you turn. Now you take the scary bit. Come on. Show it to him. No, no, no. Oh, great. You hold it in your hand. He's okay. He's not going to hurt you. You fed the monkeys. That was so cool. This is a Michael's cake. And, and they think it connects all the way to Africa. It was long believed that these caves were bottomless and literally connected to Africa. It's obviously been disproven since then, but in the 1700s and the 1800s, the rumors are that soldiers hid in here, some never to be seen again. Um, searches were done for their bodies and they were never found, so it's quite intriguing. A few thousand years ago, this giant stalagmite fell on its side and it's permanently concreted into the ground. But these white lines here show that there was an ice age. Now they rock out some awesome concerts in the auditorium of this game. Yeah. Do you see the way the stalagmite and stalactites make a greenish hue? Yeah, it's still it's like the oh, oh, oh. <laughs> My camera moving does not do this cave the justice that it deserves due to its beauty. So I'd highly encourage you to come see it yourself. Hi there. Look at it. It's, a baby. it's fast. It's hiding. It's Some peanuts to feed it. What is it? It's a baby. It's a baby. It's a baby. Hi. Hi. Beautiful, I showing off. Hey, are you monkey heaven? No. Do you love monkeys though? Yes. They're everywhere. Yeah, they are. Nothing to you. No.
I highly recommend using a taxi tour to get to the top of the rock in Gibraltar so you can interact with monkeys and just see how awesome this place is. <laughs> a baby monkey! Hey. You! <laughs> Go see the baby. Yeah, 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 We were very sad to leave the monkeys, but it's time to explore another one of the 200 caves. Grayson, where are we at? In some kind of tunnel that soldiers dug. What did they dig it for? They dug it for shelter and so they could battle without getting hurt. What, what can you call that kind of battle? What's important about this cannon? It's important because it sticks out there and it goes straight stuff out of there. Oh, wow. What is it? That's how they would dig their caves the chisels. What's happening in there? So, the actual rock of Gibraltar was thought to be a great storage area during the time of war. So they chiseled it out to create tunnels where they could store their food and their weapons and their ammunition. And every time they began chiseling deeper, soldiers would pass out because they couldn't breathe. So they would put these little holes in and then they said, hmm, how smart is this? Let's stick our cannons through. Therefore, the strategic plan of the Great Siege was born. Gibraltar has a really unique history when it comes to the Spanish and the Brits. Apparently Spain owned it first and they traded an island Menorca for it. And in the clause when they traded it, they put that Gibraltar can never be traded again. So the Brits have it, they'll never give it back. It is part of mainland Spain. Um, so it's very controversial. Spain, I believe, regrets that decision a little bit. Now, Gibraltar is kind of expensive because you have to get pounds. So a lot of people will fly into Spain and stay in La Línea de la Concepción, which is a town right at the border. It's a 10 minute walk across the border and it's much cheaper than staying at the actual rock of Gibraltar, which is, again, British prices and the conversion of American dollars to pounds or euros to pounds. We had lunch at a restaurant called Roy's Fish and Chips today and it was okay. Um, Great. Got a little bored and decided to feed the birds. There were pigeons all over the restaurant. And so he started breaking little pieces of his french fry off and he started feeding it to the birds. Why did you feed the birds, Craig? So he had to help them. 
So the things that we don't really share a lot is the difficulties of being in a foreign country that people may or may not understand. I'm sure those friends that we have that have come to the United States um, understand the struggles. Um, <laughs> but the rest of us don't really get it. The culture is different here, but we are in the UK, in Gibraltar. They are more proper than more we proper, are. More proper than we are. kids get away with a little more than they should. And Grady feeding the birds did not go over very well. And we actually ended up leaving the restaurant with our feelings hurt. And um, the restaurant, it wasn't them, it was some of the patrons um, at the restaurant. But these are the things that are difficult for us that we don't really share a lot. But I'm just going to be real with you guys. Like, sometimes things happen overseas for us that I just kind of walk away like, why did that just happen? Would that happen if we were in the U.S.? Or the best question is, is this how we treat people sometimes? Because if it is, we're not doing right. So now we know. When in the U.K., don't feed pigeons. Ocean Village is one of the most popular destinations. It's one of three harbors in Gibraltar, and it's got a yacht called the Sunborn Gibraltar, which is a huge yacht that is actually a hotel and a casino. It was really interesting to see it and let the boys um, check it out. Casemate Square is one of two squares in Gibraltar, and it's one of the most popular for eateries, um, such as the Roy's Fish and Chips that we had lunch at. And we had a really nice um, dinner at a little Italian place and enjoyed some gelato. Now let's talk electricity. In Europe, it's 220 volt. In the US, it's 110 volt. You need different plugs. In the UK, when you plug your stuff in, you actually have to use these switches to turn it on or off. So don't be alarmed when you plug it in and it doesn't work. So European plugs are the two small holes. Brit plugs are the three big holes. We use this Tri-Ace converter box because it steps things down from 220 to 110 and it can be used in the US, the UK, Europe, and Australia. I'll put the link in the comments in the description box for where I purchased it at. It's wonderful for traveling through Europe. It's come really handy to be able to use my straightening iron without having to purchase a new one, um, even though we are slowly purchasing new European. Mediterranean steps are these gorgeous stairs leading from the top of Gibraltar all the way down into the Mediterranean Sea. We decided for this trip that the boys just weren't quite ready to do this hike, so we just looked down upon it. I borrowed a few of these pictures from um, the internet just to show you what it looks like. You can see how it zigzags. It's quite arduous. Um, I would say that it's an advanced um, hiker and it's very strenuous, so with the children we just opted not to do it. Driving through Gibraltar was very interesting because we went through a ton of these caves and you can literally see that we're driving just straight through the rock. So aside from the monkeys, my two favorite things that I found in Gibraltar, which were quite corny, are these squiggly lines. No, you're not drunk and no, the person actually knew how to paint. It just means there's a crosswalk up ahead. Be slow, use caution. I don't know why they had to squiggle it. This and this is what I wanted to show you. <laughs> Me too! It's a real red telephone booth. It's a double telephone booth. It's like winning the lottery. There's two. Hold on, I'll bring you in. Make a phone call. All right, guys, thanks for coming along for our adventure through Gibraltar. We hope to share more of our adventures, so make sure you hit like and subscribe. Hasta luego. Until next time.